All right, welcome to the Hank Haney Podcast here on NoFilter.net. You can see the Hank Haney Podcast on NoFilter.net and on YouTube on the Hank Haney channel, Hank Haney Podcast. And you can hear the Hank Haney Podcast on iHeartRadio or wherever you get your podcasts. The podcast today is brought to you by Bet Online, which is your number one source for the NBA Finals and Stanley Cup playoffs this season. Every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads while the games are being played. When the game's over, head over to the online casino to get in on a game of blackjack or poker, or you can unwind with one of the 150 slot games. So head over to the website today to get in on the action. Use the promo code BLEAV for your 50% bonus on your first Deposit, bet online, where the game starts. That's betonline.ag is where you find it. Hey, Haney Podcast is also brought to you by Haney University, which is my website. And that is where you go to find information about getting a golf lesson from me. And it is also where you can sign up for my free instructional videos. They go out on a weekly basis. So if you're interested in getting better golf, that is how you do it. Okay, today's topic is the... U.S. Open at Pinehurst. This is a special event for me. Pinehurst is where my career began. I uh, I started coaching at Pinehurst Hotel and Country Club. I not exactly started, but that's where I had my big break because that's where I met Mark O'Meara. And Mark was my first student on the PGA Tour. I met Mark in, in the early 80s, uh, 81, 82, I think, I think 81. And uh, he was 124th on the money list on the PGA Tour. And two years later, he finished second on the money list on the PGA Tour. And all of a sudden, people thought maybe Hank Haney might know something. And before you know it, I had a, a, a bunch of students and a bunch of lessons. And none of it would have happened if I wasn't standing on that driving range at Pinehurst Hotel and Country Club and happened to meet Mark O'Meara. So a special place, special golf course. Phenomenal golf course, different kind of course. As rough is not the topic at Pinehurst. It's more the greens and how they fall off around the edges and how hard it is to hit the greens and how hard it is to get the ball up and in on the greens. Tremendous golf course. Love, love Pinehurst number two. And that is where they are playing. But today I want to talk about the field at the U.S. Open. The USGA is probably one of the most backward organizations that I have ever seen. So nothing that they do comes as a surprise to me. And I have not been a fan of the USJ for years and years and years and years and years. I coached professionals for 35 years. I don't know how many U.S. Opens I've been to, but it, it was a lot. And every time I went to a U.S. Open, Every single time, players would complain about the U.S. Open. If it wasn't the golf course, if it wasn't the depth of the rough, it was about the food in the hospitality areas, the, just everything. They, 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 they are an amateur organization trying to run the biggest professional tournament there is. And, and I always... I always thought, why, why don't they just turn this over to the PGA Tour and let them let them run it? But they but they insisted on, on doing it. This is their big deal, the U.S. Open. How many times have they screwed up the U.S. Open? The golf courses, Shinnecock, where they, they, they had to come out and water the greens during the round. They screwed up Shinnecock twice. I mean, that's where that uh, Mike Davis finally had to call it quits after he, he botched that thing up. So he's the former head of the USGA. He finally had to get out of the way, and uh, it, they, they messed that thing up so bad. Uh, it, it, then for years they were going, they were going to all these different golf courses. One up in, in uh, Seattle or Portland or where? I mean, just just like none of it made sense. Okay, and, and this is typical of the USJ. <clears throat> but one of my big things with the USJ, and I used to talk about this all the time when I was on the radio. It was the fact that they can't figure out a way to 
to make it possible for the service members, service men and women who serve our country to come to the tournament for free. PJ Tour does it, but the USGA can't figure out. They give they'll, they'll, they'll give you free tickets to the practice round. That's what they'll do. But they won't give you tickets to the tournament. I don't know how many people they got out there. It's a golf course. It, how many how many service members would show up? How many would show up? Okay? I mean, 100, 200, 300, 1,000? I mean, I, pick a number, whatever it is. You telling me they couldn't they couldn't get just blend in out there on the golf course with how many ever people you got out there? But they have to limit the tickets, the USGA, and they can't give free tickets to the men and women who serve this country. And by the way, who are not only currently serving this country, but what about the veterans? USGA can't figure out. We'll give you a ticket for the practice round, okay? You know, we'll give you one other ticket for the practice. I just like it used to drive me, still drives me crazy. I don't, I don't get it. There should be free tickets for everybody that is in public service. You're the U.S. Open. You are the United States Golf Association. You can make a case that none of this even exists without the the, the service men and women who have who have served this country. It's absolutely just. It drives me nuts. It's a, it's the worst thing I've ever seen. Then they can't figure it out. And you know what? I, I used to question them on this all the time. Then they hated me. They tried to get me fired at, at off the radio at Sirius XM. They absolutely hated me. And, and, and it's because I always brought up this topic. And they you know what they used to say? We're looking into it. We're looking into it. Well, here it is. It's still happening. 2024. And I looked it right up on the website, right up there. You, know, you can get a ticket for a practice round. It's terrible, just awful. But that's not that that's not even what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about the field at the US Open. That's what I want to talk about. So I want to I'm gonna get into that, but first let me mention another sponsor, Voodoo Pain Relief Cream. That is my pain relief cream product. And it is the best product. If you've got arthritis pain, joint pain, muscle soreness, product's fantastic. Go to voodoopainrelief.com and check it out. 100% guaranteed. Absolutely the best product. It's got like 15 anti-inflammatory ingredients, and it works works uh, phenomenal. Just have so many great testimonies. Read them on the website. You'll, you'll read, a, read how great the product is, how much people love it. They order it over and over and over again. So go and check check out the Voodoo Pain Relief Cream. If you've got the arthritis pain, it will help you tremendously. All right, the field at the U.S. Open. The USGA is destined to have the worst field probably of the year of the major championships. The PGA had a great field. The PGA figured out, even though they all were together, all these groups, the PGA of America, the PGA Tour, the RNA, who run the, the Open Championship, and the United States Golf Association, and the Masters. That's the, that's the cabal that, that, that controls golf. That's, that's the cabal right there. They were all against LIV. And they have, have, have had a, a whole conspiracy against them ever since the get-go and everybody knows it. i mean it's so it's 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 so obvious it's incredible but the pga of america figure out hey we want to have the best field and they should because they make their money the pga of america which is the organization that runs the professional golfers like myself who are teaching pros and run clubs they're not the pga tour they're the pga of america they get their money through the PGA Championship, the Ryder Cup, which they happen to own. They own the Ryder Cup, too. PGA Tour does not own the Ryder Cup. So the PGA of America gets money from the PGA Championship, the Ryder Cup, and dues that members like myself pay. That's where they get their money. A big part of that is the PGA Championship. So they want to have the best television ratings they can have. They want to have the best tournament they can have. And they want to have the best field that they can have to produce those television ratings and the tournament and the galleries, all of the above. 
So they found it upon themselves that, hey, you know what? We better invite some of the better players that, that uh, you know, haven't qualified through our outdated, antiquated qualifying system, which includes the official world golf rankings, which everybody knows are a joke. A to- what, kind of, of, what kind of official world golf ranking would have Dustin Johnson, Brooks, you name them, every one of them, Bryson DeChambeau, Joaquin Neiman, Taylor Gooch, Brooks, everyone, every single one of them. Which one, what, what official World Golf rankings would have all those players not even ranked? Half of them, I don't even think, are in the top 200 now. You got to be top 60 to get an official World Golf ranking in the, uh, in, in the U.S. Open. For the USJ US Open. They just gave out the last exemption. I just read so some guy named Chris Wood. Wouldn't know him from the man in the moon, but he's ranked 60th in the official world golf ranking. So he got in the US, he got in the US Open. Meanwhile, meanwhile, okay, meanwhile, no Joaquin Neiman. Clearly one of the best players. And all these players I'm gonna list were top 60. No problem, absolutely in there before they went to LIV. But because they went to LIV, no points, no other criteria are we going to use. Nope, we're not going to do that. You've got to, if you want to play, you can go qualify. Well, how are you going to qualify? Because you can't get points on the on the official World Golf rankings. So the other only other way to qualify is to go to a 36 hole qualify. You got to play 36 holes in a day. And for some of these players that had to go qualify, a lot of them PGA Tour players as well, for some of them that had to go qualify, they just got done playing a tournament the day before, a 72-hole tournament. Now they got to go play 36 holes at a different course one day. I mean, and the odds are slight, okay? There might be 50, 60 players out there. Maybe they're playing for six spots. You know, maybe 10% of the players get in. I don't know what the official number is, but it's not much. Some sites have 35 players and they have maybe three spots for it. That's how you get in. So you got to go out there and you got to play 36 holes in one day and you got to shoot zero. You got to shoot zero is what you got to shoot. Because if you don't, you're probably not going to get get in. They let, they're they leaving out Joaquin Neiman. They're leaving out Taylor Gooch. They're leaving out Patrick Reed. They're leaving out Sergio Garcia. They're leaving out Louis Oosthuizen. Now, Louis Oosthuizen, Patrick Reed, and Sergio Garcia have won major championships. They're major. Cha- they're past major championship. Now, they might, you know, Sergio might not be at the at the at the, in the peak of his career. But let me tell you something. Sergio Garcia, who actually lost in a playoff to get in, he went to the 36 hole qualifying, lost in a playoff in Dallas. Didn't get in to, to the uh, U.S. Open. Uh, Patrick Reed, I don't think he tried to qualify. He wasn't going to do the 36-hole deal. I don't know if Oosthuizen did or not. Neiman, I don't, I, it, all these players get, get left out of the, of the U.S. Open. And that weakens the field. It weakens the field in anybody's estimation. But the USJ is so backwards and so stupid, they couldn't figure out to do something to invite these players or change their qualifying system because they want to make sure that they back up the PGA Tour in their fight against the Public Investment Fund and LIV. That's what they want to do. Even after the even after the PGA Tour, you know, signed some agreement where they're going to work with the Public Investment Fund and LIV, they still went and did it. So now here they are. They get questioned. Of course, they're going to get questioned. And they get questioned at the U, at, you know, prior to the U.S. Open. Then they've got a guy, Michael Wands, the the, uh, the the chairman or president or whatever of the USJ. He took over for for uh, Mike Davis. That guy was so bad. I don't know if this guy's any better. Who knows? Uh, you know, his main thing is, is roll the ball back. But but uh, but but now he's got a diff- we got a different guy in charge. We got this 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 uh, guy John Bodenheimer. John Bodenheimer. Now, I would have to, he took over from Mike Davis after Mike Davis screwed up the U.S. Open so bad for the umpteen time at Shinnecock. This guy took over. Okay. They, they, and Davis, Davis just, you know, went off. I guess he's, he's, he's designing golf course. I don't know who in the world would ever want to play a golf course designed by this guy, but he's designing golf courses. So Bodenheimer's running the, the, the U.S. Open now. And I have to, I would have to say, 
that he's he's doing a better job than than what than what used to happen. I, I, I'll, I'll give him I'll give him credit on that. But but he he's now come out and said, OK, after the field's already set, he said, we're going to we're going to look at this. We're going to look at this in the future and look at our qualification system because we want to have the best field we can have. What about this year? This year, this year, you, this is the way they always operate. Now they're going to go and they're going to look at it in the future. Like all you had to do was look at the list in January and you knew that none of these good play, great players, Joaquin Neiman, Sergio Garcia, Taylor Gooch, Louis Ustazen, Patrick Reed, they're, they're all players that should be playing in the U.S. Open. They should be playing. No questions asked. They should be. You can, you can question a few other players, but there's no reason these players should not be playing in the U.S. Open. And if they don't, they don't change their system now, the problem is, is certain players' exemptions are going to run out. And before you know it, they're not going to have Dustin Johnson. They're not going to have Brooks Kepka. They're not going to have Bryson DeChambeau. So now that they, oh, you know what? May, maybe that's a little too many, too many big name players that we don't want to exclude. So maybe we better think about changes. So Bodenheimer's saying now, you know what? We're gonna, we're, we're probably gonna look at that. We're probably gonna look at this in the future. That's how they do. See, we're never gonna make a commitment. That's like when they blew me off on the on the uh, the tickets for the servicemen and women, the United States military. And they can't give them a ticket. They blew me off for that. I, you know, when I told them, I said, you know what you want to do? You got that whole row of tents that you guys are 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 having on the on the the eighteenth hole, the seventeenth hole. So I don't know where your tents are. They put tents everywhere at the U.S. Open. Then they sell them for a bunch of money. You know what you should do? You should have a tent for the military and for. So all the service members, past and present, and you should have, a, and you should also include policemen and firemen and and and, and paramedics, and include all those too, and and, and you should have that uh, open house for all these play these people, and it should be free tickets for everybody, free food, free drink, come in our pavilion. They won't even give them a ticket. They won't even. They are so bad. But they said we're we're, we're going to look at it. We're going to look at it. Where's the tent? Where, where's the, where's the tent? Where's the tent for, for these players? When are you going to take care of these people? Never, probably. Who knows? Okay. But, but now they're, now they're talking about the field and they're backwards on this too, because now it's already happened. They, Taylor Gooch is, Taylor Gooch is one of the best players in the world. He was top 30 on the, uh, in the first year world golf rankings when he was on the PGA tour. He's won, I don't know how many times on LIV tour. They tell me all of a sudden he's not a top 30 player. He's the top 30 player. You tell me Joaquin Neiman, I think he's won like three times in LIV in the last, you know, six, eight, nine months. You tell me he's not a top player and he doesn't deserve a, a spot in the U S open. It just, it, you know, Patrick Reed, I mean, Patrick, you might, a lot of people might not like Patrick Reed, but Patrick Reed's, Patrick Reed's a top 60 player in the world. I mean, come on. Uh, and and Hazen, and Sergio Garcia, I mean, I mean, this is, but nothing surprises me with the USGA, but now they're going to look at, so here's what's going to happen. All these major tournaments are going to have to look at this. And, and for whatever reason, because they control this, you know, it's mainly because they they're all in the cabal, but they they don't want they don't want to give up on this official world golf ranking and figure out some way. So if you're going to use the official world golf ranking, that's fine, but don't give out sixty spots for that bogus ranking. Give out forty spots for that bogus ranking because it doesn't include anybody who's playing on the LIV tour. So how can you give out sixty spots? They had plenty of time to change this, but they didn't because this is the way the USJ operates. And and you know what? They'll probably still they're playing a great venue in Pinehurst, number two. They'll probably still have a great tournament. And you know maybe they'll have great ratings. Maybe they will if they have a storyline like they had at, at the PGA, but the PGA championship had actually better ratings than any tournament this year. They had a great field. 
And one of the reasons they had a great field is because they included all the best players in the world. The USGA doesn't do that. And they, they fall back on this fallback position is everybody has a chance to qualify. Everybody has a chance to qualify. You know, every, everybody has a chance to go play 36 holes in one day, uh, you know, 60 players for six spots. That's what everybody has a chance to do. You know, it, 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 this, yeah, they did have a chance. They did have a chance. I, I'll give you that. Uh, but do you want to have the best field or do you not want to have the best field? I can't believe, I can't believe the television networks, the television networks that put up all the money for the U.S. Open, the British Open, the Open Championship, the Masters, the, 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 the PGA Championship, and all of the PGA Tour events. I cannot believe the television networks that pay all this money are putting up with this crap. I mean, I can't believe it. Like they they have this bogus official world golf ranking and they say we've got and they'll tell you too. Well, we've got this many players in from the top 100. <laughs> you got this many players in the top 100 and you're not even including any players that should be in the top 100. <laughs> it's just like it, it's it's crazy, but they get away with this. But I don't know how long they're going to get away with this. And when it starts costing them money, television ratings, gate because people don't come to watch, and most important, television revenue, when that costs them, and when they think that's going to cost them, when they think that's going to cost them, then they will change. And then they will find a different way to give their exemptions and they'll let the best players in the tournament. But right now, they're going with they're 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 staying with the cabal, and they're not gonna they're not letting it happen. So this year, you know, the U.S. Open, I'm like, where are these other guys? Why aren't they playing? They're not going to be there. Hopefully, it's still a great tournament. Probably will be, uh, but not fair, but not surprising. That's the thing. Not surprising. Not surprising at all. All right. Hope everybody enjoyed the podcast. Hit the follow button on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, make sure you catch all the great programming on nofilter.net. You can see the Hank Haney podcast on uh, YouTube on the uh, Hank Haney podcast channel. You can check that out. And uh, we will talk to you soon on the Hank Haney podcast.